Buenos días, eh, son, son las 10 de la mañana en punto, si les parece, iniciamos nuestra sesión, que el día de hoy va a ser en inglés. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Ana López Mestre. I'm the CEO for American Chamber of Mexico. And thank you very much for joining us today in launching our brand new webinar series, Doing Business Mexico, to promote American investment within our country. Uh, I'd like to especially thank Jose Friedrich Garcia Malitz, Under Secretary for Investment, Promotion and Attraction of the Ministry of Economic Development and Competitiveness of Tabasco. Also, Enrique Espinosa, founder of Alabu, as well as Amchem's most important binational allies, the Mexican Embassy in Washington and the American Embassy in Mexico City, who are joining us this morning. As you may know, Amchem Mexico has been representing American businesses and investment in Mexico for over 100 years, boosting bilateral trade and investment, strengthening the rule of law, and promoting the integration of supply chains across North America. Respect research insights shared by our Trade and Investment Center, this initiative seeks to share knowledge and information about Mexican states to U.S. companies and business chambers. And for our first session, we are honored to have partnered with the state of Tabasco. Tabasco is currently ranked 17 in American foreign direct investment in Mexico, and more than 781 American companies have operations in the state. Several Amtem members have found in business opportunities in different sectors, including energy, logistics, and manufacturing. Therefore, we are very excited to share this conversation with our members and keynote speakers to explore further ways To strengthen our ties. So thank you all again for connecting um, with us this morning. And now I will give the floor to Jose Burnes, who is our Trade and Investment Center Manager. He will share the latest trends in bilateral trade and investment. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks, Anna. And thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, we're very excited to launch this new initiative. Um, I'll start sharing my presentation. Um, we're, we're very excited, uh, particularly because this is a very important time for investment promotion in Mexico and particularly for American companies. Um, and today we're looking to talk about the USMCA North American manufacturing, the new opportunities that you know the USMCA is bringing to American companies and particularly for the state of Tabasco what the latest trends are in uh, bilateral trade and foreign direct investment in Mexico. Um, talk a little bit more about what AmCham's Doing Business in Mexico series is and what we do at AmCham Street Investment Center. So COVID-19, um, as we all know, has uh, accelerated a shift in global supply chains. Um, over the last couple of months, there's been you know, wide disruptions in a lot of different key industries. And particularly in Mexico and the US, uh, between March and April, there was a, an important disruption um, in, in global trade and, and supply chain. And some manufacturing capacities in some states were also halted for a while. Um, But now, after the recovery over the last couple of months, um, particularly between June um, and, and September, uh, Mexico has become an increasingly attractive market for American companies and other international companies for manufacturing and nearshoring supply chains. Um, the USMCA um, that you know, came into effect over uh, the last three to four months um, basically strengthen regional cooperation and trade integration. It's a new market of over 480 million people, and particularly for SMEs in North America, this has opened a lot of access to opportunities that, um, and strength and cooperation that was, you know, previously um, not there, especially in e-commerce and other, you know, new um, areas of, of investment. Um, there's a lot of cultural similarities within our business communities. Uh, particularly more than 60.7 million Latino or Hispanic people in the U.S. Um, this is 18.5% of the entire U.S. population are Latino or Hispanic. And Mexico has the largest American expat community in the world. 
Uh, both Mexico and the U.S. are each other's top training partners. Uh, Mexico has uh, manufacturing in Mexico gives access to 13 free trade agreements with more than 50 countries, including the U.S. and Canada. And we share a 3,145 kilometer border, which is the most active and vibrant in the world. So, and I do want to stress this um, as the main point. The U.S. is Mexico's largest investor and trading partner, and Mexico is currently the U.S.'s top trading partner as well. So if you look into what is currently happening in my national trade this year, um, there's five top trading partners um, of the U.S. Mexico is the number one. Um, it has been for most of this year, 14.1% uh, of all um, 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 bilateral trade. Um, and in, in the U.S. is with Mexico. And if you look closely into what is happening in the last couple of months, um, in August 2020, uh, total bilateral trade flows trailed August 2019's numbers uh, by only 11.69%, um, which if you look close, and this is a month by month um, comparison, between March and May, there was a, a marginal decrease in, um, in trade flows. Uh, hitting the lowest point of the year um, in April with a decrease between March and April of 43.46%. But there's been uh, incredible uh, recovery between May and and August. So even though there was a marginal decrease in August, this is still, um, there's still an important recovery for trade flows. If we look at FDI, um, the U.S. has consistently been Mexico's top source of FDI. Um, if you look at the top five countries, I mean, if you add Spain, Canada, Germany, and Japan from 1999 to 2020, it doesn't even come close to the amount of American investment in Mexico. Um, if you look at the first semester of 2020, same pattern, the U.S. is still the top source of FDI um, and has been for the first half of 2020. Um, the only interesting you know, insight from um, the latest trends of this year is that Canada has become the second uh, top source of foreign direct investment, um, which if you look um, between 1999 and 2020, Canada was the third and now and this year has been the second, uh, which also you know comes to show the importance of the USMCA and the you know trilateral relationship that Mexico has. If we look at the top 10 global FDI sectors in Mexico, um, the most of the investment has been concentrated in transportation equipment manufacturing, which is the auto industry and, and derivative industries of the auto sector. Um, but we've also seen important investments in credit intermediation related activities and utilities, which is electric power generation, nat natural gas, water and sewage. Um, if we look at American FDI um, over the last two years, we see similar patterns, but um, important investments in computer and electronic product manufacturing and retail trade and self-service and department stores. And this is a national uh, comparison. So I'm sure Federico will speak more into the, you know, current um, trends in, in, in in American investment in Fort Tabasco, particularly in the type of sectors that they're trying to attract. Um, if we look at FDI in Tabasco uh, from 1999 to 2020, um, again, the U.S. is their largest investor uh, by far, and their their largest source of um, and their largest partner, um, with Spain and the U.K. being a uh, far second and third. Um, if we look at the uh, American FDI over the last five years, uh, there was an important recovery. Um, it's always been positive. There's an important recovery between 2016 and 2019, um, and we see um, as uh, significant increase um, it, over the last three years, uh, which comes to show the, the, the opportunities that are available uh, for American investment in the state. Now, before we you know, jump into the presentation of Federico, um, I just wanted to share uh, what at the Anchan Doing Business series is. Um, so we're hosting webinars with the investment promotion teams of different states in Mexico. Um, so we're starting, we're launching the series with Tabasco, uh, and then later this year, we're going to have one with Aguascalientes and next year with Mexico City, Jalisco, Nuevo Leon. Um, and all of our sessions are going to be public and uploaded to YouTube. If you're interested in, in getting access to this presentation or have questions about latest trends or, or in bilateral trade investment, you can always 
uh, send us an email to trade at amcham.org.mx. Um, and these are some of the services that we offer uh, for our members um, in facilitating bilateral trade and investment, um, business development, supply chain development, um, and trade and investment advisory. Um, so without further ado, um, I would like to introduce to our keynote speakers for today. Um, and I will read their, um, their bios. Give me one second, I'm just pulling them up. So we're very happy to have um, both Jose and and Enrique participating in this webinar. Uh, Jose Frederic Garcia Malitz is, uh, is the Undersecretary for Investment Promotion and Attraction in Tabasco. Uh, in this role, he plans local economic development and investment policy and coordinates issues concerning competitiveness and international trade and investment initiatives. The Undersecretary develops, implements, and evaluates investment attraction programs, including strategic planning, potential investors, uh, prospect identification, and aftercare. Prior to his tenure at the Secretary for Economic Development and Competitiveness in Tabasco, he has been actively engaged in aspects related to the energy, oil, and gas sector for more than 22 years. Mr. Garcia Malitz worked at Garcia and Malitz Enterprise as Director for Operations. In this position, he, has, uh, he was responsible for providing wells, intervention, and stimulation equipment services, and for developing and managing deep water field contracts. He was a member of Tabasco's oil and gas cluster creation team. He served as vice president of the National Chamber of Industry Transformation in Tabasco. Uh, and Mr. Garcia Mads holds a Master of Business Management degree and a bachelor's degree in industrial engineering from Instituto Tecnológico de Estudios Superiores de Monterrey. Um, and now I'd like to introduce um, our other keynote speaker, Enrique Espinosa. Um, Enrique is leading the first digital based agroforestry trust in Southeast Mexico, a very ambitious project to align the best silvicultural expertise with the leading AAA customers in Mexico and abroad. Uh, what is most amazing and unique about this entrepreneurship is that the main purpose of this project is not about selling or leasing the land, but about giving small landowners access to the professional tools that are currently available for large companies. Um, the company has grown over 20,000 hectares of teak and eucalyptus FSC plantations in Mexico, Colombia, and Costa Rica, uh, which became the first steps to allow Proteac to start commercializing teak in India, China, and Vietnam. And since 2015, it leads to the development of Mexico's forestry industrial project that includes a high-tech MDF plant in Tabasco with an investment of over 200 million uh, USD. Before joining Protac, Mr. Espinosa was responsible for the management of retail furniture store chain in Mexico and was previously the CEO of preferred furniture design manufacturing in Mexico. Uh, Mr. Espinosa is a law graduate from Universidad Panamericana and completed a master in business administration from IPAVE 8D2 program in Mexico City. Uh, so without further ado, uh, please welcome both uh, Mr. Jose uh, Federico Garcia Maltz and Mr. Espi uh, Mr. Enrique Espinosa. Thank you very much, Jose. Uh, I want to thank on behalf of the governor of the state of Tabasco, Mr. Adán Augusto López Hernández, and the Secretary for Economic Development of the state of Tabasco, the invitation to talk about the great opportunities to invest in Tabasco. We will be sharing a presentation with you about what Tabasco offers to all the investors. Next slide, please. Well, Tabasco is located on the southeast Gulf of Mexico. We share a border with the with Guatemala, so we are the entrance door to Central America. We have um, um, many kilometers of coastline, and we share borders also with the state of Veracruz, the state of Chiapas, the state of Campeche. Next slide, please. Well, Tabasco is the is is a important logistic uh, note for the southeastern part of Mexico. We have more than 59 regional distribution centers from different uh, corporations like grocery stores, like Walmart, like um, uh, big stores. We have uh, also the oil and gas industry. We are in the center of the oil and gas and industry activities. 
We are, have also a lot of service companies who have made Tabasco their operation, uh, the key operation uh, offices for all the southeastern part of Mexico. We have more than nine industrial parks with over four million square meters of uh, available space. So Tabasco is uh, logistically located, very important for the southeastern part of Mexico, and of course, the developing the boundaries with Guatemala. Next slide, please. Well, uh, Tabasco is also called to be the energy hub of Mexico. Um, between Tabasco and Campeche, our next neighbor state, we have uh, more than 73% of the GDP of uh, oil and gas activities. And for the state of Tabasco, if you saw the presentation that Jose showed us before, when the um, FID plunged in 2016, it was because of the oil prices, when they, when they plunged them down. So 50% uh, of that activity um, goes to the GDP of the state. So we're now working uh, in this new administration. We entered this administration in 2019. Um, we are trying to give, um, diversify the economic activities of the state to have not only the energy, but also different activities. But for now we have, uh, due to the energetic reform that took over in the last uh, six, six years, we have 37 contracts for deep water and shallow water drilling operations in the Gulf part of Mexico, and this will sum up to 42 billion US dollars in the next 30 years of invest worth of investment. So the big IOCs are in Tabasco, you name it, uh, Shell, Chevron, um, Murphy Oil, any Hochi, European companies, American companies. So we have a lot of uh, investment in the oil and gas sector. Next slide, please. In this slide, you can see uh, the opportunity to invest. Uh, Tabasco is the green, the green color. We have uh, 4,000 million US dollars worth of investment opportunities uh, in the oil and gas industry. The next state is uh, Campeche, is the blue one. That's uh, 5,000 million US dollars. And then you go up in the red, in the color, red color, that's Veracruz, and the orange color, that's Tamaulipas. So if you can see, we are just in the middle of the oil and gas activities, the main big oil and gas activities. We have um, light crude oil, which is a very high quality oil that's mixed with a heavy oil to make a blend that goes to the refineries in the Texas and Louisiana area. Next slide, please. Well, talking about human resources, we have uh, very good uh, skilled labor workers. 50% uh, of our working uh, population in the age of uh, working, they have, uh, they are below uh, 35 years old. So we have a strong, young uh, work, um, work labor force available for companies who would like to invest. We have more than 45 universities, technical schools, and training centers uh, that develop this skilled workforce due to that we have a long tradition and history of oil and gas industry we have hard skills uh, very good hard skills development on the our students this means hydraulics electrics pneumatics um, controlling uh, ti so all the main uh, hard skills needed for any industry that wants to settle in tabasco you will have um, developed skilled for so that's very important we also have a lot of um, both, uh, skill force available Unfortunately, due that the state was, uh, um, their main activity was oil and gas, and when the prices plumped, we got a lot of uh, unemployment rate. So there's a lot of people available to work, unless uh, otherwise to other uh, states in Mexico that are almost full employed. We have a labor institute that also uh, helps uh, companies to train people in certain skills that are, will be needed for any factory. And we also have a research, uh, the State University has a large, uh, they call it the Knowledge City. It's a very big campus where they uh, do applied research for companies. Um, next slide, please. Which are the incentives for investors? We have cash incentives, depending on the magnitude of the investment. We can also help them develop infrastructure like roads, like water plants, uh, power uh, lines. 
and everything needed. We also have uh, availability for uh, land, uh, land purchase. And we also have, we are focusing very hard on the investment in improving the one, uh, we call in Mexico, one office to open your company. So uh, this uh, regulatory commission, uh, if you are going to open a factory or a company in Tabasco, you only have one phase to do all the permits, all, all the permissions needed to open your company and start building. So that's very important, one of the incentives uh, to give some assurance to the investors that they will be a campaign to during all the process of settling in the state. Next slide, please. Well, this is, these are some of the strengths of the state. We, uh, even though that we are under COVID-19 harsh economic uh, conditions, the state has managed to grow 7.7% in, 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 in this quarter, regarding to 2019, so we have the state grew its GDP compared to the last year, even though that we are in, in, in pandemic. Uh, and this last quarter, we grew 3.6% above the last quarter. So already into the, the COVID-19, the state keeps growing. And this is due to important investment and economic decisions the state has done. And of course, some um, anchor investments from federal investments. So right now, Tabasco is the nation leader in quarterly and yearly GDP growth. We also regularly to improvement what I was uh, talking about. We uh, were first place in complying with all the re-engineering process to obtain the permits. We all, I talked before, we have a young workforce, uh, 30 years and, and, and younger, 60% of that um, workforce. The population of the state is 2.3 million. We are also top five in labor peace. Uh, this means that we, if you settle a company in Tabasco, you won't have any uh, union problems, you won't have any uh, different uh, problems. So we are, peace labor is very important for us. Uh, job creation, uh, even also even in pandemic and COVID-19, we managed to grow in job creation 1.8% from March to June 2020. So the state is working, we're doing some strategies to keep growing the state. Of course, improving security. We know that safety is important for, in, for investors. So from January to May 2020, we have a, the, the, from 15 major impact uh, felonies, we have uh, managed to improve in 13 of them. So the state is doing a major effort of giving uh, safety to investors and um, legal certainty on the investments. So this is very important for the state of Tabasco and the governor has been very keen and aware of, of uh, helping this. And of course, all this information you can see in the slide and afterwards when this presentation is shared with you, our official information. Next slide, please. Which are the federal anchor projects in the area? Of course, the refinery. There is a new refinery uh, being built in the state of Tabasco. They're going to process about approximately 300,000 barrels of crude oil. Uh, the Maya train, it's also a federal project that uh, will have two stations in the state of Tabasco and will connect the existing or modernize the existing railway tracks that will go to the interoceanic corridor, which is also a, a big federal project that will link the Atlantic Ocean with the Pacific Ocean through a railway and highway system. And we're just a, about uh, 200 kilometers away from that um, interoceanic corridor, which means that if you settle a company in the state of Tabasco, you will be able to get raw materials and um, parts from Asia, uh, just drive them 190 kilometers to Tabasco. Mm -hmm. And then you can export them through the Gulf Coast to the east coast of the United States or to the uh, Pacific coast of the United States. Next slide, please. We also have, a, of course, a local anchor investments. We have the Protique, that's the MDF uh, wood panels that uh, Enrique Espinosa was talking about. We are on, the, on, the, on, a, on its way, it's a dehydration plant for milk. We have a bulk storage tank farm for uh, good um, diesel fuels and gasoline. We're also having um, the um, power plants. We have three natural gas power plants and we are 
seeking for a fourth uh, natural gas power plant. Of course, we have the gas in the area. And Walmart is building a new distribution center. This would add up to uh, the first one they already have in the state. And this new one is worth uh, almost 900 million US dollars of investment. Um, the Hochi and Eni, that's a big uh, two uh, big uh, oil and gas conglomerates. We're all building infrastructure in the Gulf of Mexico to receive all the crude oil and separate it and to be selling to refineries in Mexico. And also a big um, uh, plant for uh, animal food, like fish farms and uh, different animals. It's a big animal uh, food plant that's been already built. Next slide, please. Which are the potential investments if you would be interested in investing in Tabasco? Of course, tele telecommunications is very important. We are a flat land, so there are no hills. So it's very easy to invest in, in, in telecommunications. Uh, the refinery will connect to the uh, Maya train railroad system that will also connect to the interoceanic corridor and to the central Mexico and north to the United States railway system. And this is a 90 kilometers railway uh, system that will need to be built. So that's a potential investment. Of course, meat, farm, uh, meat processing plants, Tabasco used to be, or is right now, we used to have a very large uh, meat processing plant, but we have a lot of cattle uh, development, cattle and pork. So we are looking for investors in meat processing plants. Of course, the south border hub to Central America, to Central and South America, that's also a very important logistic hub here we're working on. A manufacturing a cluster industrial park. This means that we have a right to the railroad tracks. We're working on developing a manufacturing uh, a cluster so companies, uh, plants can settle there and then ship their parts or their products through the railway system to the interoceanic corridor. Uh, there's a lot of investment potential in gas. As you may know, gas it will be the driving fuel source for creating electricity for our life, electric cars, everything needs to be, uh, even the renewable energies. Besides that, the gas investments are also very important and we are, uh, all these contracts that are drilling right now on exploration wells, they will be needing uh, all the pipelines or the, mid, the midstream and downstream uh, facilities to process that gas. So that's another important investment opportunity. We have, Tabasco has 35% of all the sweet water of the state of the nation. This means that all those plants who need a lot of water, we have that. And we have a lot of rivers, and we're working also to developing a river transport system like the one we have uh, proven very successful in the United States. That's another important investment. And of course, we're working on a new port. This new port I will be talking about uh, on the next slide. Next slide, please. So if uh, foreign investment, the direct investments, FDI in Tabasco. So Tabasco in 2020, we were number first in, this, in the southeastern part of Mexico of attracting investment over 291 million. In the first year of our administration, we managed to attract $491 million. Most of this investment is related to the oil and gas sector. And you can see the other states uh, also have investment, but Tabasco has, even in pandemic, we have managed to attract investment because we are a very interesting, attractive um, state to invest in. Next slide, please. Which are our exports on, we are also a very important agro-industrial state. Uh, we have uh, a lot of sugar uh, plantations. We have banana, lemon, pineapple, flour, uh, corn flour. We also have mountain banana, watermelon, and pepper. One of the main assets of the state is chocolate. Uh, the chocolate that we produce in the state is a very high quality chocolate. And all our foods, we have a lot of agriculture industry who manufacture uh, like sauces, like um, uh, catfish jerky, snacks, uh, fried snacks. Those, uh, those agro industrial products have no conservatives, have no additional flavors. So if you are talking or looking for healthy food, uh, superfoods, we are a very important state to grow different types of plantations. And of course, in the forestry potential, 
we have a, a very, very high growth rate, four times the average, the national average on forestry. Enrique Espinosa will talk about that later. So in the, from the agricultural part or agroindustrial part, Tabasco has a very great potential. Next slide, please. There will we have also a potential on renewable energies that goes more than almost 2,000 megawatts available in different mix like in a photovoltaic energy, solar energy, and hydraulic energy. Of course, gas also. Next slide, please. And I'm talking the port. We have actually two ports. We have the first port, which is already developed. It's a Los Bocas port where the refinery will be built. In the picture on the on the top, you can see on the on the back of the picture, that's the area where the refinery is being built. And that's the, the first port. And on the second picture below that, it's the new Frontera port. It's going to be a port. We already have the land, 311 hectares of land. I mean, uh, we will start uh, this year um, to hand in the port permission before the authorities. And we believe that we, will, we can start construction of this port in 2021 by uh, semester, second semester of 2021. This will be a mainly offshore uh, operations port. But we will also have uh, good sports and uh, uh, like for different materials like grains and which will also enhance the agricultural potential of the state. Next slide, please. We have an international airport who has more than 12 tons of cargo every day from international freights like DHL, FedEx. They all have their, due to restrictions, you cannot freight directly or inside Mexico. You can ship from the United States to Tabasco, and then from here you have airplanes, local airplanes, who can manage all your logistics and cargo. Next slide, please. We have all, we are developing the railway system. We talked before the 90 kilometers from the refinery to the Maya train rail, rail tracks. So the opportunity in the railway sector is very important. All the Maya trains will start from Tabasco and Palenque, which is a nearby uh, city from the state. So investing in, in railway systems, tracks, uh, machinery, it's also will be the keynote for the central uh, uh, and central Mexico and southern part of Mexico, and of course, with the interoceanic corridor. Next slide, please. So these are the investment opportunities for Tabasco Railway, internet connection, the Frontera port, which will have also, a, besides the port, a big and large uh, manufacturing area for companies to settle down. We're already talking with off-takers for that part. So there will be an industrial park besides that port. So that's very important. In agribusiness, it's also an important investment sector opportunity. Uh, the forestry, we are the largest forestry producing in a commercial producer in the country, and national gas and distribution. Next slide, please. Why invest in Tabasco? We have the best political environment. We are uh, the most developed logistic infrastructure in the southeast part of Mexico. We have special investment for in, in, in for important projects, incentives. And most important, we really deeply care for investors on aftercare and soft landing. It does mean we can help you with uh, getting contact with the municipal authorities, getting helping with the permits, hiring people, uh, settling your managers in the state, getting all type of accommodations, and so all the soft landing really is, is important for us. And the after care is also important in case you have any any needs, any special technological needs, and then getting you together with local universities for developing technologies. That's also one of the main goals of this uh, uh, after care service that we provide. Uh, we have also skilled neighbor, and we have linkage with uh, science and technology, real estate agencies, and consulting. Next slide, please. So the investment opportunities in Tabasco are, are uh, right now, we have uh, best, uh, the best opportunities to invest in Tabasco. We have uh, also a local distinctive called Esencia Tabasco, which all the products that are produced in the States have this distinctive that are produced, uh, produced with quality, with uh, that activate economy, environmental friendly, and they have a national, international impact. So we're working also developing and supporting 
all the products that are being manufactured in the state and linking these companies to potential consumers in the country, in Central America and abroad. Next slide, please. And last but not least, Tabasco is a great place to live. We are um, here in Tabasco, the, the oldest uh, indigenous uh, civilization, who are the Olmecs, and they started here in Tabasco. We have uh, chocolate farms where you can walk through the farms. We have uh, pyramids, like the Comalcalco pyramids, um, adventure, tourism, and of course, the food. Uh, the food in Tabasco, you have to taste it. We have great food, great seafood, great local food, different types of food. So Tabasco is also a very nice place to live for your personnel, your managers, your working force, and it's, it's a very, very nice place to live. Next slide, please. In case you have any inform further information, this is my email, my contact number, that's my cell phone number. I can answer via WhatsApp, via email. We also have Twitter. And I want to thank the American Chamber of Commerce for this opportunity and uh, invest in Tabasco. It's the best uh, potential investment you can do right now, and we will help you make that uh, investment profitable. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Federico, for the you know great presentation. Uh, now we'd like to you know, give the floor to Enrique, um, you know, to share his insights and his you know experience investing in the state. So, Enrique, take it away. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Thank you for for opportunity to share my experience based in Tabasco. And let me tell you that uh, what Federico has just said, it's uh, a 100% truth. The state of Tabasco is bringing a, a complete new opportunity. And I will say that is helping us to partner together as investors or companies trying to work there with the government. And for today, I prepare as, as, back, as my backup experience uh, to share some of the opportunities that the forestry sector in Mexico has, and in particular in the state of Tabasco. Uh, let me tell you that for me it's amazing that this first uh, the first program uh, from the American Chamber related to the forestry, because uh, although, as you said in the introduction, Jose, the 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 um, the investing of the of the United States is very important in Tabasco. There is no, no companies of, of, the, of the forestry sector investing in Mexico. And I think that it's because they don't know about this opportunity. Let me, let me begin telling you that, that in Mexico, our, our forestry only gains 0.8% of the GDP, comparing with countries like Chile or Brazil. And this is unbelievable because in Chile, this is what's made in three years. So this is an opportunity more than a problem. And it gains uh, only uh, it, it, our, the, 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 the trade deficit is, is, uh, is over $6,000,000. Million, six and this in particular deficit in the commercial trade is very, very amazing because it only refers to the forestry sector. This is the individual, the individual uh, deficit uh, by itself more important because although in Mexico we import a lot of grains and other, other kind of, of things, we are the best exporters in top of the world in fruits and, 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 and vegetables. But in this one, we don't have any comparisons. But the good news, the good news is that, that the trees grow in Tabasco. The, the trees grow in Tabasco, and we have this great opportunity to have more than 3.5 million hectares available to plant trees. And this, in the, in the, in the, in the past uh, 20 years, Tabasco has become the most important uh, developer of commercial plantations. 
And let me share only with you that the in 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 particular in Protic, uh, in the last ten years we invested in eucalyptus plantations, bringing technology on our trees, and we have the best plantations at the first rotation, even gaining the Brazilian six times uh, trees over forty five over forty five. I am, I am a, a, I am a uh, growth of the trees. This is is a reference. This is a reference that most of the people don't know. Today, in Tabasco, we are growing trees. We are growing trees that they are available for usage in less than five years. So it's forest trees becoming in the Tabasco area more like in a crop. You can't believe the amount of water that Federico was referring that in some places like in Tacotalpa we receive over 4.5 meters of water a year. So this is how the trees grow and this is the area where the, where the trees have to grow. So it has been very slow on the on the production of commercial, but let me tell you that in only in only 20 years we have planted a little over 200,000 hectares of plantation. And now, in this year, we are producing 10% of, of, the, of, the, of the timber needs of Mexico with only, with only 200,000 hectares. And this is also something that the good news is Tabasco withholds the biggest plantations and will be and will be the 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 leading eight of of timber production through the next uh, in in year 20 to 25 the, the year 20 to 25 it will have the most productions even from all over mexico as federico says right now we have the first the first mbf plant base in clona plantation and let me tell you that, that this is a very important investment, over $200 million, that was done by Protic. And, and, this, and this was granted by the Afores, by all the people uh, in, in investing in, in Mexico. And it's the first time that, that there is a forest because there is a plant, and there is a plant because there is a forest. So we are very, very excited about this kind of, of uh, state of the art industries in Mexico. And I hope that we can, we can establish some relationships with some people that would like to invest in this sector. Another good, very good news is that uh, the, the price of the land. You, this is something that I, I think that when you share the presentation, most of the people will be surprised. But the price of the land in Tabasco, in particular, it's it's less than three thousand dollars. So for long term investments, this is a great opportunity. You can you can see how much is the is the land in Argentina or even in Brazil, and it doesn't gain the capacity of the quality of the land. Remember that this 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 uh, this part of the country was a jungle uh, in the seventies still. And, and and then we change a little bit to the cattle and, and other grain cultural things. But the, the, the vocation of the land is really the forestry issue. And at that price, it's, uh, it's really a great opportunity for, for, for investors. But as, 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 um, as, we can, as we can notice, one of the things that most infer investors are afraid in the time in Mexico is the land ownership, ownership and stability. And let me tell you that since we arrived to Tabasco about 15 years ago, and we have never had any problem with the, with the ownership of the land. This is very, very important and also has been a, a state, as uh, Federico says, with a lot of help in the ownership uh, in the in the labor furnace, uh, right now Tabasco withholds uh, three of the most important of the biggest forestry companies in Mexico, and uh, and uh, and let me.
tell you a little bit about my experience working with uh, with the government and and uh, since the beginning of this administration the governor of tabasco federico and the secretary of economy uh, had helped us a lot in 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 making our investors and our visitors like working all together we we can say we can say that that the the people that have come from other countries will say that the companies are and the state are together i even have hold uh, uh, visitors in the office of the government as ours and i really like to thank federico about this uh, this uh, this initiative uh, because we can feel that that they are here to help and propose the 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 the, the benefits of the states uh, in as a success story of this as a as a keynote in in during the beginning of this administration we decided to 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 promote a project and we can confirm right now that we're in the final process of signing the contract with one of the biggest pallet company manufacturers in the world that is going to plant through Alabol, our company, 10,000 hectares of Gmelina that will be used for pallet manufacturers. And this is this is in a five five year turnaround project. But in the next uh, 15 years, the, the 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 value of the project is more than 225 million US dollars. Uh, just to 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 thank and uh, Federico and the American Chamber of of for for the invitation. I hope that we can we can uh, be on board in any project on the forestry sector. And I will leave you my information for any kind of of doubts that you can have. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for your presentation, Enrique, um, and, and thank you for uh, your time, both Federico and, and Enrique. Now we'll transition into uh, question and answer. Um, so if you're interested in sending a question, you can send it through the chat or the Q&A um, or PNR Pregunta y Respuesta uh, on, on the chat. Uh, we received a couple of questions that I think um, might be a good place to start, uh, Federico. And please tag along, Enrique, if you, you, know, you feel like it's something that you could add. Um, so particularly for American companies, and, and you know this webinar is targeting American companies in, in the U.S., uh, American companies. Uh, what sectors do you think have the highest growth potential um, for American companies in Tabasco? Which sectors? Yes. Uh, like, which sectors would you think have the highest growth potential for American companies? Well, of course, uh, the oil and gas sector is very important um, because we will have we will be one of the few states that have upstream, midstream, and downstream process of all the value chain of the oil and gas sector. Uh, gas is very important for the future. And I think, but American companies already know that and they're present in that. So but I believe oil and gas sector, we're right now on these 39 contracts I was talking about, they are in, on the exploration phase. So they will, it would take them like five years to start getting producing oil. And the expectation of those wells from what they have been drilling right now is huge. So we can be stepping up from 1.3 or 1.7 million barrels we have right now up to 3.5. So that's the potential of the state. So oil and gas will be important. Of course, the refinery is very important. The refinery is uh, is a big uh, is a big project, and investment will be more than eight billion U.S. dollars approximately. So there is also a very big potential. But I think the one another important potential is forestry, and, and I will leave that to, to Enrique, which is the expert on that part. But I think forestry, uh, we can become the next Finland uh, of, of Mexico due to the potential. We have the, the growth and the rivers and all the environment needed for those trees to grow strong and grow fast. Um, the other sector, I think, um, railway. I think railway will be... Uh, the train, the Maya train and the Inter-Oceanic Corridor 
the lead I love railway tracks, not but not only the tracks, of course, the the, the train wagons, the, all the systems, the uh, the moving parts, all the administration of the routes and the logistics. I think logistics is also another very important um, investment opportunity in the state because we will have uh, we will compete with the Panama Canal not on the not on the transport part, but we will have uh, manufacturing facilities close to that part. So if you want to build, bring things from Asia, you are onshoring your company. If you're an American company who are looking to onshore your facilities, Tabasco is a logistically very good located state. We have ports, we'll have the railway where you can have uh, parts from, from, from East, from, east uh, from Asia. You can ship them to the East Coast, to the West Coast of the United States. So logistics is so important. Of course, Central America, we have a, a back door to the Central America. So that can open also, a, a, if you stay at a manufacturing facility in the state of Tabasco, you can go to the to Central America. Um, agribusiness is also very important. We to give, to add value to these good products. Right now, the trending in most of the big cities of the United States, like Chicago, New York, California, they're getting more aware of what they eat than they consume. So we have a lot of uh, very healthy, good quality products that can be shipped to the United States. You can put a manufacturing facility to add value. That's also a very good potential. We have 35% of the sweet water. So fish farms of tilapia, of uh, crab, um, um, uh, crab facilities, there are local companies with the technology. They need the investment. They need the capital to, uh, to join. Uh, to, to increase those production farms. We already have production farms. We have the production food uh, facility to feed all this uh, fish and seafood. And that's another important investment. Infrastructure is also important. Gas, everything that has to do with gas is important. Right now, we're importing a lot of gas from the United States, but uh, within the coming years, there will be a lot, a lot of gas uh, processing plants, uh, uh, midstream transportation lines that will be needed. So I think those are important. Of course, um, uh, IT, we have very IT, good IT techs in the state of Tabasco, so developing software and developing uh, tool related. And right now in the pandemic, we're looking at another thing doing uh, via remote, we'll need apps, we'll need electronic commerce. So I think those are very important uh, investment uh, potentialities in the state. Of course, internet and connectivity, I, I spoke that before in the presentation. Yeah, thank you, Federico. And uh, actually, um, there's a lot of sectors which is, you know, interesting and, and you know, attractive for American companies. I'd like to use something you mentioned, the transition with Enrique about the forestry sector. Um, so, what op Enrique, what opportunities would you see American companies, or how can you envision American companies, you know, playing a role in the growth of the forestry industry in, uh, in Tabasco? As, as you can see, the uh, opportunity basically is in withholding uh, uh, companies that have the experience in the forestry in the United States, basically on the long-term investments. Uh, they are companies like Timos, that they are working all over Latin America and of course in the United States, but they are not doing it in Mexico because uh, because uh, the, the, the the board of directors right now is, uh, appear to be afraid of the land ownership in Mexico, and uh, and the most important thing is to say that it, this is not a problem if you do the correct things and the correct legal issues to to support it, you can even have partnership with the HIDOS or with any other uh, social acquisition of land. Uh, we we own, uh, the different companies own over 70,000 hectares and they have never had any problem, neither with the ownership or with the people living there and everything. We can grow together. So I think that in the long-term investment, uh, I think many TIMOs can be invited to Tabasco. And as you saw the opportunity, there's a huge market, only domestic, that we're importing from most other parts of the world, maybe Brazil, not as much from the United States. Thank you, Enrique. Um, you mentioned, you both mentioned the importance of infrastructure. Um, and, and you mentioned, you know, Port Frontera and other infrastructure projects. Um, for American companies, what projects would you like to highlight um, and when do you expect uh, Port Frontera to be finished? 
Well, the, if everything goes as uh, planned, it will start production in 2021, and the first uh, stage of the port will be finished in 2022. Uh, so it's it's a that will be a first phase. Really, it's a very easy and fast for the offshore uh, technology, but we are building the port, thinking ahead on also managing cargo and bulk handling. So um, American companies that would be interested in investing, of course, in the port. Somebody asked on the on the uh, on the chat about uh, who is going to build that port. There's a due to an NDA disclosure agreement. We cannot disclose who is going to build it, but it's an international company that will, will be working with a trust fund uh, or an um, like yeah big trust fund. And uh, but the industrial park will, will be besides that. That's an important uh, part. So we already have a large uh, off tour off taker list of people trying to, to invest there, but we'll need, be needing an industrial park developing infrastructure. Of course, the state will take care of the highways and all the infrastructure to get to that uh, manufacturing facility. But I think that industrial park will be an opportunity of investment. Thank you, Federico. Um, there is another question about, you know, the distance between Tabasco from the interoceanic corridor. Uh, could you give us a little more context into the relationship between Tabasco and the interoceanic corridor? Well, we have a four-lane uh, highway uh, uh, from Tabasco to that port. That port is about uh, 200 kilometers away from Yermosa. That's a, a, a port right now. It's a small port, but it's a, it's a port that will be uh, connecting uh, the Pacific to the well, Quetzalcoatlcos is in the Atlantic Ocean and will be connecting to the Pacific Ocean. So the distance between those two um, cities is no more than 350 kilometers on a straight line. So it's a very short uh, distance between those two ports. And from Tabasco to that port, uh, it takes about, uh, on, a, on a car drive, it's about an hour and a half. I would like to add, I saw another question on the chat. Nayeli was asking about which are the aftercare services that we supply to the companies. I would like to give two examples. For example, in, in Walmart, the Walmart Distribution Center. First of all, I would like to add also, as you mentioned, Jose, in my presentation, I'm a businessman. Before I joined the dark side of the force, as I tell it, John joined politics. So I'm no, no politician, I'm really a businessman, and I know what businesses need. So in, in terms of uh, Walmart, when they decided to open their second um, distribution center, we helped them with the federal permits. We helped them with, even in during the construction phase right now, while um, uh, helping them to get local supplies for construction, for uh, even pest control, some small things like pest control infrastructure, uh, water lines, power lines, plumbing lines. Uh, getting the land. Also, another, another project we will be announcing uh, early next year, a big, big, big plant that's going to be built. We're helping, helping them get the land. We're searching land for them. And the aftercare services, getting employed people, how to employ people, uh, helping them to get the skills, train the people. Um, if they have anything for right now, for example, they need flu shots. Uh, flu shots are difficult to get right now. So with the local government, we're helping them get the flu shots for their personnel, getting housing for them. And right now, there are some companies who are trying to um, export to other countries, and they're having some barriers to export to that country. So we are helping them with the econ national economic uh, minister to help them get into those countries and all those uh, entries, entry by barriers to help them get to those countries. So if you if you put a company, a manufacturing plant here in Tabasco, we can help you get to other markets. We have a relationship with the embassies of other countries through the Foreign Ministry of Mexico. So we can help you get your products and goods to other countries, help you with all the permits, uh, certifications of origin, import, export, help you with as a company trying to export to the United States. So we are um, helping them to get a wholesaler in the United States. So for those agricultural products, uh, getting um, agreements with Federal Express, with uh, DHL to get the, the logistics going. So we have really, we're doing work, uh, walking the mile to help those companies be successful in their endeavors here in Alaska. Perfect. Thank you, Federico. Um, is, is there anything you'd like to add? Okay. 
Well, thank you everybody for 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 the introduction and and the participation. Thank you. Well, um, we're reaching the end of this webinar. I would like to remind you that if you have any further questions, you have both Federico, Enriquez, and my emails. Um, so if you have any questions about you know infrastructure projects or any investment projects in 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 Tabasco or opportunities for American investments, um, we'd be happy to help um, on the and we'll send you the email through the chat. Um, so anyway, in to close this webinar, um, in name of our president, Jorge Torres and Francisco Ponton, uh, we'd like to, you know, give you a virtual um, diploma of recognition for your participation in this webinar. Um, again, we're very excited to strengthen these investment opportunities and the relationship between Mexico and the U.S. And we believe that Tabasco uh, has a lot of opportunities for American companies that are trying to set up um, shop and invest in the state. So thank you very much. Thank you everyone for joining. And again, if you have any further questions, um, please feel free to send us an email. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Federico, Enrique, thank you. Thank you, Jose, for hosting us and for joining. Have a great day. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Anna, for having us. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you very much.